Good afternoon. My name is Dmitry Zolotuchin and I'm Chief Data Officer at Start. We will talk about how we approach the application modeling challenge at Mode TV. We will discuss how we frame the problem, the data we use to solve it, and how we work with that data. Next, we will focus on the process of training the model and challenges we take. Finally, we will review the results of we obtained. A brief overview of our company. Mori TV is online video services where users can buy a subscription and renew it monthly or opt to watch ads instead of subscribing. In the worst scenario, we earn a revenue as an advertising platform. Our goal is to grow, grow our subscribers, subscription base. One way to do this is by offering user a discount. The logic is simple. It's better to create somewhat less from a user if that secures a recurring payment that it is still more valuable than advertising revenue. However, the challenge is identifying users who will have subscribed without a discount, so we don't lose profit unnecessarily. Uplift modeling helped us to solve this problem. The goal of Uplift modeling is to predict how users target variable, such as subscription purchase. Will differ if they are targeted, for example, offered a discount, versus if they are not targeted. We can both target and not target the same person, so we're really on the average treatment effect. The difference in subscription purchases between the group that received the discount test and the group that didn't control. Because we randomly split users into the test and their control, this metric is made valid. In addition to predict accuracy, our main non-functional requirements are stability and interpretability. They follow from the high cost of user acquisition and hence of user communication data, and from the elastic nature of movie TV show demand. Since there are frequent new releases, the model must not overfit to specific shows, but should focus on more timeless indicators. Training, we use the data from experiment in which the test group was offered a free 30 days trial extension, while the control group received no offer. A banner was shown on the website so that it couldn't be missed. After the bonus trial period ended, we checked where the users converted to a paid subscription or not. Hence, we should know where the a users was offered the extension and whether they unlimitedly subscribe. We, de we derived 13 features per users based on how they interact with Mover TV, the player, the search function, and project pages. For example, for the player, it's how often he watched the project, TV shows, movie, and etc. Search function, it's how the number of keys that he yielded, no results, and yielded with the results. And features from project, it's something connected with similar to this. Most users actually accurate in the player, activity in the player, so that's where most features come from. Of course, we log much more data points, but we select the features most indicative of eventual resubscription. Our selection criteria was the Gini score for each feature to conversion. Testing follows a standard flow. We split into training and test sets, train the model, then validate on a hold out set. We measure the score on both sets and ensure they're neither overfitting nor underfitting. That's it, our model is ready. What is the score we used? Gini is the difference in shared of success on conversion in test versus control. But the entire but for the entire sample, the difference is always the same. So how we incorporate the model's prediction? We sort users in the sending order of the prediction uplift from high to lower. For each segment, we calculate Gini among the users with a high score. <coughs> then plot Gini against the number of users producting something like the solid line on the chart. This one. This is the Gini curve, representing additional revenue. We compare it with a random assignment, the dashed line. Right between this curve is the Gini score we seek to maximize. This one. Gini measures the difference in success of conversion between the test and control groups. For the total samples, the difference is static. To leverage our model prediction, we sort users by the predicted 
uplift and compute by step. Plotting this produces the Gini curve, which shows the potential extra gain from targeting. We compare that curve to a random baseline. There, between them is the Gini score is our k metric. For example, if we use something. Initially, we tried random splits. Each user had an equal probability of being in the training or test set. However, we noticed that depending on how this split was done, model performer could swing to opposite extremes. Is it close to ideal or was the random ranking? That was bad. To confirm that the issue was not merely unlucky validation sets, we fixed the validation set and assembled the training set from the remaining samples randomly with replacement, similar to a bootstrap approach. The validation scores still showed a wide variance, and the variance remained stable even after 400 experience iterations. This indicates we need to different splitting approaches to achieve stable results. You can hear there is 95% CI bootstrap is stably high. Our first solution was to split by user registration date. We put the more experienced older users into the training set and the newest users into the test set. This also nicely mirrors how we had handled production, where the model will predict for new arrivals. We used an 80% to trade 20% train validation split and trained an ability random forest from the kernel ML library. Looking at the graph, however, users spread across a few distinct peaks. You can't isolate the most prom promising users with just one threshold. There are three spikes, so we tried an other approach as well. First, second, third, and we can't use the threshold, unfortunately. The second approach was to statify the data. A feature in the training and test sets as disturbed Simon, sorry, similarly, and similarly, population distribution. Model results should be more stable. But which feature do we use to stratify? Including them all produced too many strata. So we settled on three. The user's number of active days, where they converted, and where they were offered the discount. We choose number of activity days because it has the highest Gini score for prediction of Christian conversion. Our goal is to end up with 80 to 20 percent split into training, train and test sets. We first certified to select 50 percent of the uh, as the initial training set. From the remaining half, we repeatedly sample 1,000 examples, preserving stratum proportion, and then to the training set, train a model and then test it on the leftover data. If the genie on train and test differs by less than 5 percent while outperforming random rank. We keep those 1,000 samples in the training set. Otherwise, we discard them. We discard them. We continue until the training set if 80% of the overall data. This reduced the number of peaks on the graphs somewhat to two peaks, but we still didn't see the desired tight clustering at the top of the rank. We continue can choose the threshold. Our third approach was to stomp on sampling. The idea is that the remaining 50% of the data, not in the training threads, is split into clusters. And we pick data from the cluster with the higher rate of successful training attempts. This way we in incorporate prior iteration outcomes and any environmental changes. For each cluster, we assign a better function distribution and update its parameters based on whether the training attempt was successful or not. This algorithm is similar to the previous one, expect, except instead of pulling data from the entire pool, we pull it from just one of the four clusters. And after training, we adjust the, the beta distribution parameter for that cluster. In theory, it should converge to a better outcomes. Unfortunately, in about half the cases, we can't get it to converge converge within 10,000 iterations. So there is also, we can, now we don't have any peaks, but we continue. It's hard to choose a threshold. And our final method, the first one, is com 
combines database splitting with Thompson sampling so is combination of our dat database registration and with Thompson sampling. We first pick the oldest 50% of users of for training and then draw from the other half in cluster via Thompson sampling. This approach almost always converges and learn to rank users more tightly near the top of the list. So now we can choose the threshold and we choose the 20%, which is likely zero. The model's performance, we take a cohort of new users to tr on trial. 5% are offered no discount and 5% percent receives the discount in any case. This provides our gold standard control and test group to compare conversion and see if there are genuine effect. We score the remaining 90% with our model, select the top 20% by prediction uplift and give them an offer, this one. Then we compare subscription conversion, can we expect higher conversion among those offered the discount versus the non -di no discount group. While the group that didn't receive the offer should perform on par with the no offer control group, meaning we are not losing potential subscri subscribers who should have been given a discount. Our next plan to test different discount among the lengths. I also personalize utilizing the offer even more. We also intend to find the optimal timing of discount for the period of the first, second, or third weeks after the initial period and experiment with the offer for users who have multiple subscription already. For example, offer for first subscription, second subscription, and the third. So that's all. Let me share the overview of what we have done. We used Uplift modeling to, dive, to improve our subscription base. For that, we use Uplift with a few steps of analyzing data. First one, we used, we just randomly split the test and control and test and control. After that, we used strata function, diet regist, the data register date and Thompson sampling. And as a result of our final destination is the combine the data registration and Thompson sampling. That's all. Thank you for watching. Bye.